once you have your Tacoma put in park or if you drive a manual in gear with the emergency brake on, you're gonna go ahead and take your floor jack and position it underneath the truck where it will support the driver's side or left side front wheel. Now I'm gonna be doing these individually in the way I'm by myself and I specifically do not wanna remove all the tires and put the truck on jack stands. This is a good idea if you're doing this alone. So what you'll do is you'll go underneath the truck you will see where the frame is and jack it up directly on the frame. Specifically lining it directly up, you want to make sure you have a good hold on the truck. And then start lifting up, check it, make sure that it lines up with the middle and that you're not crushing anything you shouldn't be lifting up on. So. Once you get some tension on there, go ahead and leave it. Go ahead and take your socket for your lug nuts on a breaker bar and loosen the lug nuts. Go ahead and store them in a safe location along with the key and remove the tire. Once you have the retire moved, you will go ahead, put it in a safe location. And at this point, you want to, as a safety measure, put a jack stand right there, just in case it comes down. We do not want to damage the rotor. So now we have exposed the wheel well. We'll be able to work in there. Now that we got the wheel off the truck, we're going to go ahead and remove the covers, starting with the front and the rear. So you could use a flathead screwdriver and work your way around, or the dealerships have a special tool to remove these tiny little rivets. Since that was taking too long, I went ahead and moving two pliers, which are working. So here's the rear flap. Okay, store the front bump down below. Now your work area is exposed and we're gonna go ahead and move the ABS wire loom out of the way. Now that we have the two Total Chaos upper control arms for the Toyota Tacoma in front of us, we're gonna go ahead and install the urethane bushing, inner sleeves, and the Zerk fittings. So let's go ahead and open those. Super Lube provided by Total Chaos. The four inner sleeves and eight pushings. And then the next thing we will need are the Zerk fittings, which there will be four in the way that there are two on each upper control arm. Separate the urethane bushings from the inner sleeves. Then go ahead and push them into place. Apply pressure as needed. One key with these is making sure they're lined up before adding pressure. Again, adding pressure, lining them up. If you have to apply more force than you think, you are probably doing it wrong. So be careful when you're doing this as you do not want to mess up. Once all urethane bushings are snug 
and fitted into the upper control arm, it is time to install the inner sleeves. And it'll be important to lubricate these properly and use the specified manufacturer's lube of choice, which is Super Lube. Link will be in the description below. Once all urethane bushings are in place, we're gonna go ahead and use the supplied Super Lube to lube the inside of the urethane. We are not lubing the inner sleeves. Once one is done, you will go ahead and take your inner sleeve, start pushing it into place, take a dead blow hammer and strike Now with the other side, go ahead and lube it as well. making sure to get grease all inside. Take your inner sleeve, start it. Once it's started, go ahead and strike with your dead blow hammer. Once the urethane and inner sleeves are properly inserted into the upper control arm, it is time to insert the Zerk fittings. You will need a 10 millimeter wrench to tighten these down. Be sure not to tighten them too tight as they are pipe threads. You essentially want the Zerk fitting to point out to the uniball as to make re-greasing these upper control arms easier once they are mounted onto the truck. One helpful tip is to lift up the upper control arm so that it is level and you are putting the Zerk fitting in at a 90 degree angle instead of at a 15 degree angle. Tighten all Zerk fittings down. So again, making sure that all face to the uniball. This is how they should sit with the urethane inner sleeves, Zerk fittings installed, pointed out to the uniball. Leave the zip tie on the misalignment as we will remove that when we install it into the spindle arm. First step is to remove the wire loom by taking pliers, going in, removing, pulling up, or grabbing it and forcing it out. Once that is removed, it should be loose. Once the ABS wire is loosened, you will re remove the linkage for the sway bar with a 17 millimeter wrench. Once removed, put in a safe location. Once the washer is removed, go ahead and remove the sway bar link by gently tapping until it comes loose. Remove the belly pan from the front of the truck and use a 14 millimeter socket to remove four bolts and spacers that hold it up. This way it gives easier access to the sway bar linkage. 
that you will be adding a spacer to accommodate for this lift. Once the belly pan's gone, it'll give easier access to right here. Um, you'll use a 14 millimeter socket head to loosen the sway bar as you will be adding a spacer right here so that the link, the actual sway bar doesn't rub on the new coils. So definitely remove this and install the spacers because you don't want to hurt your new coils. Use the lineman dykes to remove the factory cotter pin, reach from behind and pull out. Use a 19 millimeter wrench, difficult to remove. Once loosened, get untightened from hand. As you can see, it's definitely corroded. Once releasing the spindle, make sure you secure it. I do not have a bungee cord, so I'm using paracord. And you just want to make sure that this ABS line and this brake line have no tension on them. You do not want to rip a brake line right now. You'll remove the ABS mount for the wire harness behind by pushing a clip right there. So you'll want to pull down this flap, push it from there, but then another one here. You could do this by using a flathead screwdriver. You will need two 19 millimeter wrenches to loosen the through bolt for the upper control arm. You will do so by attaching one on the left side of me and one on the right. And by simply loosening this using a socket head and trying to get that out without using a crescent wrench. Go ahead and remove the washer and nut. As you can see on the left side here, when I go to pull this through bolt out, it will hit the frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a large pair of channel locks and bend that towards us so that the bolt could slip through and go into the engine bay and then we could get it out. Take your pair of channel locks, attach it to the frame. Make sure you have a firm grip, but more importantly, make sure you are not grabbing the wire loom that we loosened. And slowly work your way to the right. As you can see, this was tucked onto the other side. And now that I'm pulling it towards me, it is exposing this part of the frame that was not painted. Once you get your fender well bent back towards you, you're gonna grab the bolt and slide it through. And this is after struggling with it for about 20 minutes. But now, it's finally out. So here is your through bolt, and here is your stock OEM upper control arm. Use a 15 millimeter socket to loosen the three bolts on the coil bucket. So you loosen these. Then you will take a 19 millimeter wrench and loosen the bottom lower control arm bolt. Remove the lower control arm nut with washer. Place in a safe location and push the bolt through. Therefore, the shock. Make sure to match these so that you don't get it confused. Then you will loosen the three bolts on top of the coil bucket. Make sure to press up to not create tension on the three bolts. out. Now that we have the shock assembly ahead of us, we're going to go ahead and cut the misalignment spacer. Go ahead and bring the spindle arm forward. And now it's officially in the bucket. I went ahead and placed hardware right here so I can grab it. Now we are going to attach the lower control arm to 
into the shock. I'm gonna feed. Take a 19 millimeter wrench, attach the lower control arm bolt and spacer, and tighten. Once your upper control arms are properly prepped, take the washer, feed said feed bolt up through. Once you have that, then you'll attach your last washer to it, then tighten. Take your two 19 millimeter wrenches, attach to the through bolt, and tighten. Now take the supplied hardware from Total Chaos, first cutting the zip tie for the misalignment, removing it. Make sure that Total Chaos is spelt right. Do not make the mistake of putting on the wrong one. I'm gonna unbolt. They have supplied, take the bolt and the washer, slide it through the upper control arm, put the adapter in, slide the adapter down. sway bar and push it into the spindle. Once it's in, go ahead and use the OEM nut. Go ahead and use a 17 millimeter wrench to tighten down the sway bar that connects to the spindle. Now that we're getting to the final stages, you have your clamps right here. I took a 5 16 socket head to loosen these and what you're going to do is you're going to feed them through the loop and then leave them loose in the way that you're going to bring your reservoir up like this and then it'll hold right there. This is what the final product looks like. You have your reservoir mount right there, your spacer bracket kit for your sway bar that is holding up the bracket for the reservoir. You have your upper control arms, which are total chaos, and the 2.5 Fox suspension with 600 pound springs. All in all, after installing the suspension, it did take me about an hour and a half uh, for the following reasons, uh, not having the correct tools, not knowing how to do it and learning how to do it, and three, being by myself. Uh, if you're going to install this suspension at home and not go to a dealer, which I highly recommend, um, make sure you have a buddy to help you. So that concludes today's video. Feel free to like, share, and comment. I will get to every comment in the way that I want to help you as the viewer install your suspension without taking it to the dealer. Again, a lot of people ask me about warranty issues. If you're worried about a warranty, I highly recommend having a dealer install your suspension just so it's worry-free and if something goes wrong, it will be at the dealer's expense. Now, it will be more expensive, but if a warranty is really concerning you, I highly recommend that.